past two months, we have witnessed an unprecedented shutdown of Jamaica's economic pillar with many hotels and tourism related businesses closed temporarily and thousands of workers sent home. It is no wonder then that the loudest voices for the reopening of the economy is coming from this sector. And as much as I hate to admit it, they are right. We are caught between a rock and a hard place. If Jamaica reopens too quickly, then we are only inviting a catastrophic second wave of COVID-19 on ourselves. On the other hand, we can't just sit in limbo and wait indefinitely. Prime Minister Andrew Holness seems to have buckled under the pressure from the business community, announcing last week that Jamaica is preparing for a phased reopening of the tourism sector. So on the face of it, what it look like Andrew say, if a dirt a dirt, who want dead dead and let the fittest of the fittest survive this pandemic? But the fact is that Jamaica needs this proactive approach. We have to prepare our facilities and our people for the day when travel resumes. We have to get ready and stay ready. Media reports are saying that some major hotels have accepted bookings for June and Jamaica's largest hotel chain, Sandals Resorts, says it intends to reopen most of its hotels on June 4th with protocols that range from enhanced cleaning routines to required temperature checks for its team members. But Jamaica is not alone in a region that is almost entirely dependent on tourism for economic survival. Both St. Lucia and Antigua, hugely dependent on tourism like Jamaica, are planning to reopen to tourists next month. Our tourism minister, Ed Bartlett, said that tourism-dependent countries like Jamaica will have to take the lead and be more proactive in what will amount to a new way of thinking in an entirely new ballgame. He said, it's one where travelers will likely look to avoid big cities and public transportations, including planes, and be more likely to choose domestic travel. So, if we know this Mr. Bartlett, why aren't we promoting more domestic travel? It is true that the domestic market wouldn't bring in anywhere near the dollar amount that we get from international travelers. But arising from the depths of this pandemic, the industry can learn from domestic vacationers how to properly manage COVID-19 and tourism. What about Jamaicans abroad? who want to come home and who need very little convincing to spend their tourism dollars there. At the time of this broadcast, our beaches were still closed. Will tourists be allowed to come in to enjoy our beaches while Jamaicans are under restrictions? Will curfews and social distancing be observed at tourist facilities while Jamaicans are restricted from gathering in groups? Prime Minister Andrew Holness said, that the government has two priorities. One, the health and safety of Jamaicans, and two, their livelihood. But even as he tries to balance the two, Health Minister Dr. Chris Tufton sounded the alarm, saying, once your airports and seaports start opening up, once you relax some of the stringent measures of institutional quarantining, then the truth is that you are going to see another set of threats that confront us if we are not very vigilant. Translation, if we reopen our borders to tourists en masse, we risk reversing all the gains we have made in tackling and containing COVID-19. There is no question that we have to get economic activity going for our own survival as a country. The real question is, how prepared are we to risk the health and safety of Jamaicans because tourists want to drink pina colada on our beaches?